As Tennessee prepares to play in Jacksonville, what could Mike Vrabel say to get his team's attention? You're in the last quarter of the season. You are in the hunt to win this division. This is a division game against a team that's 1-11, has zero to lose, but has everything to gain by derailing the Titans today. The Titans have come to Jacksonville and played a very dominant game and won very impressively. You gotta trust the process, trust the process. What you got? Big division win. Hey, we got another game at home uh, next week. Hey, we gotta lock back in, get focused, man, and try to do it again, man. Tighten up! Welcome to the Mike Vrabel Show presented by Coca-Cola from the Bet MGM studio with the head coach. I'm Mike Keith. Glad to have you with us and glad to be back from Jacksonville with a victory. Lots of Titans fans made the trip down. We were on the plane coming and going with lots of Titans fans to see this win. And it was Titan football at its best. When they're doing what they do, Coach Mike Vrabel and company are playing complimentary football. We bring in the head coach and... Congratulations on the victory. You talk a lot about complimentary football. Can you give a quick explanation of what you want to see in that way? Well, I think it's when each unit's building off each other and feeding off each other, um, has the ability to, to lift uh, the other unit up or take advantage of uh, a play that they, they may create. Uh, turnover results in a score. Uh, a punt inside the 10-yard line results in a, a three and out and great field position that we turn into points. Uh, being able to, to stop them at the end of the half and, and get the ball back and use our timeouts, uh, taking the ball and, and scoring, coming out of the second half and, and, and getting a stop. Those are all things that we talk about and the players understand that. I want to show you some examples of complimentary football in tonight's six-pack that we begin. And right off the bat, Jacksonville takes the ball. They have a nice drive going. They try a 53-yard field goal with Altrick Rosas, who is a really good kicker. But in this instance, the Titans get the better of him, Mike. Well, the entire day, you know, we went out and we warmed up, and the field was uh, soft. It was soft and, and slick. It didn't have much, you know, grip to it. And you can see him here with a long kick. It, it goes down. But we also got good push. And, you know, we want to make sure we're staying away from this ball. And we're not going to go and do anything silly and try to pick it up and return it. You know, that, that's a big momentum change, and, and we, we had an opportunity to come back because we're going to see here and, and score some points off of it. So Nick DeZubnar, really smart, staying away from the football. Titans take over at the 43-yard line and drive down for a touchdown, which we'll see later on, and take a 7 to nothing lead. And then after the defense gets a big stop following a turnover, it's 7-3, to three, Derrick Henry for 22, Derrick Henry for eight, Derrick Henry for five, Derrick Henry for four, and then Derrick Henry for 36, Mike. Yeah, it was just, you know, I felt like we were starting to lean on him. I felt we were coming off the ball. We were finishing. The line of scrimmage was going the other way. Um, you know, you, you see a good job there, good operation. You know, the shift, the motion, moving Corey over. You know, they're moving guys, and, and we snap it, and we're able to we'll get Derrick there on a post safety. And, you know, usually he's going to win a lot of those matchups. Titans take a 14-3 lead at that moment with 44 seconds left in the half. And then a fabulous job by the defense. A three and out, forcing a punt. Nice punt return for the Titans. They start at their own 37. Let's take it home from there, Mike. Absolutely. Ryan, you know, plants and throws, and, and Corey's able to get into this route and, and push the corner off, and they're, they're playing a little soft. And, you know, that, that play took four seconds, so we're sitting there with five seconds with two timeouts, and we go with the down, down, timeout. And now you can throw it anywhere you want because you're in a timeout situation. You've got a quarterback who knows where to go with it and a tight end who knows what to do. 
yeah, Ryan catches, throws, Janu gets inside, and, you know, here we are, everybody. If you see this from the coach's copy, there's a lot of guys calling timeout. You know, are we right there? You can see everybody signaling, and, and we're all well in tune, and we're all seeing it through the same set of eyes. So the Titans started at their own 37, and now after John U. Smith's catch, they're all the way to the 35 of the Jaguars. They've used a total, two seconds remain on the clock, and they have set up this, Steven Goskowski, who is money from outside of 50. Well, it was right down the middle. You, you see, you know, when he puts a good swing on it, you know, a confident swing, um, you know, that had plenty of distance. You know, I talked to him about his footing. He said, hey, coach, I feel good. I'm fine. And, you know, that was, uh, that was a great kick. Steven Goskowski, good from 53. So you get it. In the final 44 seconds of the half, the Tennessee Titans tally 10 points, and it goes from a 7-3 game to a 17-3 game. Tennessee would go down and score in the first possession of the second half in just two minutes and 36 seconds. Suddenly, it's 24-3, and the nail in the coffin ends up being a defensive play from a guy who had an outstanding day, Malcolm Butler. Yep, absolutely. You know, that's great recognition here, staying on top of the post, not letting him get a big play. And we got to do a better job putting the football away and trying to block instead of directing traffic. But, you know, some of these DBs, they all think that they're returners. And, you know, Harold gets into the middle of the pocket and enforces a throw. So, you know, that's just good complimentary football. And, and it, even by the defense, you know, Harold's coming up in the middle of the pocket on play action and, and, and forces the quarterback to get rid of the football. Complimentary football at its best for the Titans all day long. The offense sets up the defense that sets up the special teams and on and on and on. A primary example, getting the Titans to 9-4 and four on the season. Later on the Mike Vrabel Show presented by Coca-Cola, we'll have the Rackley Roofing Tough Titan. But coming up next, it's the Bridgestone Performance Play of the Game. And it was something else. It came early, gave the Titans a lead they would never relinquish. Stay with us. We're in the Bet MGM studio. This is the Mike Vrabel Show presented by Coca-Cola. And it's time for our Bridgestone performance clutch play of the game. You might have noticed we left this one out in the first segment because it was pretty. It's a handoff to Henry. No, it's a return to sender, Coach. You love that return to sender. You caught me off guard and you said, hey, you going to run that return to sender play? I said, man, what are you talking about? That's pretty liquor. <laughs> And uh, so, you know, Ryan takes it up and down. You can see the great protection in the middle of the pocket. That's really the key to, to our passing game is, is that great protection in the middle of the pocket. And then, you know, A.J. goes up there, holds the guy off, body control, and, and makes a heck of a play. A.J. Brown tipping it to himself for a score on the day. Seven catches for 112 yards. You wanted to come with that early in the ball game. You came with the fake punt shortly after that. Sort of telling your team, hey, we're here to go get this thing. Yeah, we want to be aggressive. You know, we work those things in practice. And, you know, when they look good in practice, you, you have confidence running them in, in the game. And, you know, Monty did a great job. The entire punt team did. Uh, wish we could have gone down and turned that into points. Um, but we had repped the, the, the play there offensively and, you know, just felt like something that, that we could do to take advantage of, of what we've done. Love that Bridgestone performance clutch play of the game from A.J. Brown on the flea flicker or return, no, to, return center. to center. Whatever you call it. Well, I'm from Tennessee. That's Elvis Presley, man. You're going to say return to center. Anyway, all right. Time now for something we can all agree on. The Delta Dental. Guess the Titan. Oh. We can, you're hot. You're rolling. You got this. We got a lot more coming up from the Bet MGM studio. The Mike Vrabel Show, presented by Coca-Cola. Can you guess this Titan? Mike Vrabel is the only person who that question really matters to. Can you guess this Titan, presented by Delta Dental? We will find out. Uh, ha have not been around this player for long, but I do think that if you look in the eyes, I think that that's Desmond King. Desmond King. He's a winner. Desmond King II is the right – well done, sir. Thank you. It's all and in the eye. Desmond King, 
I mean, what a blessing it's been to get this guy on the football team with the trade that you made with the Chargers. First of all, you've needed him with all the injuries you've had in the secondary. And he really fits Titan football. I mean, he's a scrapper. He gets after it. We saw him do it Sunday in Jacksonville again. He just keeps coming. Even if a play doesn't go his way, he's back for more on the next play. Yeah, and that's what you have to do. You know, we just have to continue to, to, to build that communication and build our knowledge, you know, of our system. You know, there, there's a lot of stuff in there that guys have, have had a lot of time practicing and, and, and Des hasn't been with us. And, you know, so there's still some things that come up, you know, that we have to work through. But, uh, you know, he's been in there. He's been tough. You know, he blitzes for us and uh, it works in a slot. And so, you know, that, that's, that's tough duty. And, and he's come in and, and he's been up for the challenge. A.J. Brown, seven catches, 112 yards and a touchdown, keeps making things happen for you. Fans love to talk about him because he he's a big play sort of guy. He's a different sort of player than the Titans have had in a long, long time. What does it mean to have this guy on your football team as the head coach? Well, he's got a great attitude. You know, I mean, he loves football. He, you know, he loves coming to work. And, you know, it, it's hard building relationships with, um, you know, with everybody on the team, especially now with where we are with the space that we're keeping and, you know, the virtual setting that, that we're doing a lot of these meetings over. And, you know, but I think we all continue to build a relationship with, with AJ. He, he does with, with Ryan. He does with his position coach, Rob Moore. You know, Rob does a great job with both he and Corey and, and the young guys that, that are with them. He's a fun guy to coach. He continues to improve and you know, he has high expectations for himself. And, you know, I know that, you know, he'd like to, to complete the, get that eighth catch you know, the, the one there on third down to keep that drive going. So we're going to have to, you know, fix some of those things. You set it up perfectly, though. A.J. Brown is this week's Rackley Roofing Tough Titan. And he's more than a great receiver. He's a great teammate. You'll see as Amy Wells visits with number 11. Give Henry. Pitch back Tannehill. Throw right side going for Brown in the end zone. One hand. Touchdown, oh, Titans! Oh, oh, man! Oh! That's crazy, Arthur Juan! AJ, it seems like when this offense is working the way that it's supposed to, you guys are having a lot of fun. What do you like about playing in this particular style of offense? It's blow for blow, you know? It's, it's, it's body side, body side. Then you want to knock out some, you know? He's either on a deep ball to me or Corey, or they're just imposing his will on everybody, and then on the crazy one. During the touchdown, I think the first touchdown, Derek scored. Me and me and Corey like running side by side, like that's it. You know, we, we knew it was coming, and we started pointing at each other. So it's definitely fun. We see him doing his thing because he gives us a lot of energy and momentum. It seems like Arthur Smith is really skilled at finding ways to utilize everybody's individual skill set. Why do you like playing in that style of offense so much? I feel like you have to. I feel like you gotta have some here and there. To keep 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 the defenders on their toes. You know, he's definitely doing a good job this year. We believe him. We trust him. He called our number and we, we try to make a play for him. You had over 100 receiving yards on Sunday. That makes eight in your career. Do you expect to have more than 100 receiving yards every time you play? I feel like I'm out there <laughs> long enough to have 100 yards. Regardless of how many opportunities I get, how many targets I get, uh, I just try to make the most. I'm not see where I'm at at the end of the game. You know, most of the time I don't even check because that stuff doesn't matter. I'm I, like, I'm really trying to get wins. That's all. That's the only thing that matters. Cause get to the playoffs, man, and, and that's what it's about. Now, your Instagram handle is 1K Always Open. So I guess I have to ask, has the expectation always been to have 1,000 yards? The nickname comes just come from high school, and it just kind of just followed me. It just kind of correlates with getting 1,000 1, 1, yards uh, every year. If Corey Davis is also able to hit that 1,000-yard mark, what would it mean to you to be able to do that with a teammate? No, he's definitely going to do it. It'll mean a lot, man. It just goes to show you how hard, how hard a worker he is, the time we put in. A lot of people probably don't think, like, we're really trying to get wins, you know. They bring it to us, like, we got to get a 1K, we got to get 1K yards. But we're really just trying to get the win and make, make these plays, you know, uh, let, and let the chips fall where they may. There's three games left in the regular season. How hard is it for you to focus on the task at hand and not peek into what the possibilities could be like in January and beyond. To me, that's kind of easy because, like I said earlier, it's week to week. If you don't show up, you will come out and get hit in the mouth and you will lose. It's the NFL. This is not no video game where you can come back 
you play bad in the first half and you come back in the fourth quarter, no, you have to come to play every game. So we just got to lock back in and, and, and focus on our, our new opponent this week. AJ, thank you so much for being our Rackley Roofing Tough Titan. Guys, we're going to take a quick break, but when we come back, we're going to talk about one of the Titans' biggest off-season challenges. That was making Nissan Stadium safe for fans. Check out how we do it on the other side of the spring. As we return to the Mike Vrabel Show presented by Coca-Cola, it's time to go inside the Titans presented by Xfinity. And one of the most important things that happened in this 2020 season had nothing to do with football. And that was getting you, the Titans fans, back here to Nissan Stadium because we wanted you to have that NFL experience that you've always loved here in 20 plus years, but also to feel safe with your family and friends. How did it happen? A lot of people put in a lot of work to make you feel safe at a game. My name is Jenny Needham. Uh, my everyday role with the Titans is stadium events manager but my 2020 role has adapted a little bit to be the Stadium Infectious Control Officer, or ICO, to focus on all of our health and safety for our staff and fans. We handle things like all of the proper COVID-19 testing for our staff, as well as for some of the key roles that are on the field for our coaches, the staff that helps them support the game day experience. We honestly do a little bit of everything when it pertains to being in the events department, being in the guest services department, because every aspect of an event day touches something else. And, and it's in the little details or the things that I'm always looking for and preparing for on a game day. For this year on game days, you know, I pretty much go around and I'm kind of a mask enforcement police. Uh, I walk around trying to make sure everybody's trying to follow the rules of the stadium with staying six feet apart, wearing your mask. In March, the safe stadium plans started to come to fruition when the stadium started working on all the elements that would keep our staff and fans safe for events at Nissan Stadium. We landed on sort of creating this task force, a group of people that were coming together to really start generating concrete ideas and processes and procedures uh, to make sure that we are making the stadium as safe as possible. So today is game day and on the service level we go through all of the protocols and processes for getting the visiting team and the home team in in a safe manner over onto the service level to their locker rooms before we kick off the game. And we've got these, these basically oversized sneeze guards which protects the fan and also the concessionaire behind it. It promotes safety. We've got our six foot marks for people to walk up and maintain social distancing. This year has taught us so much about the fan experience and what we want to continue to do to grow that in years to come. One of those things would be seeing the fan experience at a granular level to be able to go back to step one. What is it like to come into a stadium and experience a game day in the best way with safety and health as a priority? I think the most uh, positive thing we've done with this is we've worked well with the health department. They've been here at every event and they've helped us improve our practices, but they've also been overly uh, happy with what we were doing here. While it is a Titans game day in COVID, you're still having the best time ever. One of the most impressive things the Titans have done this year is to continue to cultivate community for the fans and staff around the football season in a year of 2020 when there's not a lot of exciting things to come in the news. So what I think it also is going to be positive around here is that with our safe practices, we've had other stadiums in the arena come by here and, and just watch what we're doing because uh, with the health department's approval, Bridgestone Arena and the Sounds have been watching what we're doing and they're going to follow you know, pretty much our protocol. So it's gonna be good for the entertainment of Nashville to follow our safe stadium practices. Welcome back to the Mike Vrabel Show presented by Coca-Cola from the Bet MGM studio. Time now for the Nissan Keys to Success against Detroit. Let's start with turnovers, Mike. Got to win there. Yeah, we, we got to be better with the football. You know, we put one on the ground there and you know, we got to get some more of these defensively. The Lions are, are minus two, but but the offense, their offense has been really good with it. It's going to be a challenge for us to, to get turnovers. I think they've only fumbled the ball four times, and, you know, we're going to have to try to find ways to strip it out of there and take care of it on offense. Red zone defense, key number two. Yeah, you know, I mean, I think that that's just something that we're going to have to stand up to these guys. They're, they're top ten in the league, and uh, we're going to have to get some stops down there. You know, it's, it's hard to think that they're not going to get down there. And you can see the difference that it makes 
you know, when you force teams to kick field goals. And for the offense, continue doing what you've done all year, and that's finish drives in the end zone. Yep, you know, these third downs are getting to be huge, you know, keeping them on our, our terms, that third and third and short, third and third and five or less. And, and when you can do that and you can get into those drives and convert third downs, that, that you give you opportunities to go down there and score points. Let's meet back here next Tuesday and talk about a 10-4 and four football team. I would love that, Mike. Sounds good. For Mike Vrabel, I'm Mike Keith. Thanks for joining us and reminding you, you can listen to us this Sunday on 104.5 The Zone. Titans radio coverage begins with Titans Countdown. Have a great night, everybody.